cowboy coding, it's not a flavor of development, it's a skill level. And if anything I'm about to say sounds like it could be you, then don't worry, you can learn your way out of being a cowboy coder. Being a cowboy coder might sound cool, you know, riding through the old west trying to hunt down Dutch and his cronies, but cowboy in this sense um, is generally used as a negative term. Someone who's hot-headed and makes decisions in a rash or uncontrolled manner. In the United Kingdom, if you are a builder that cuts a lot of corners and does a lot of things dangerously, then you might get called a cowboy builder. Um, and that's the same sense of what we mean by the phrase cowboy coder. It's not a good thing. And it's a shame that it's such a needlessly gendered term as well, to be honest, because you don't have to identify as a boy to be a cowboy coder. Anyone can do it. And a lot of software engineers will transition through this phase as they learn and as they move along the Dunning-Kruger curve of software development. So what does it look like being a cowboy coder or cowboy coding? Well, undisciplined, basically. Not writing unit tests, not really consulting with anyone on planning or design, not documenting anything. The classic cowboy coder is one who sits in a meeting when someone says, um, wouldn't it be great if we could build this feature or this product? And the cowboy coder just goes away, puts their headphones on and types into their keyboard for a month, comes back and announces that they've finished and here's the thing that you wanted. <laughs> Um, of course, what they've actually finished is rarely, it rarely works very well. Um, it's full of bugs, it's full of security holes. None of it will be tested, none of it will be documented. They just did the fun part, basically, and neglected all of the tricky planning and validation of their design. Um, you know, we do testing for a reason and we have processes for a reason. You might be able to bash out a free app or a website as a cowboy coder, but the minute you want to actually make some money from that code um, and to run it as a business, basically, well, your customers might say that, yes, they want this written as fast as possible. But what they really want is something that you've been testing, right? They're going to want you to have a secure product. They don't want it to break multiple times a day and take forever to fix each time. Uh, maybe they want some documentation too. They won't say all of this at the time. Customers never actually say, oh yeah, we would like this, but please can you take a long time over this so that we get a better quality product. They won't say that, but an experienced engineering team will know that that's actually what they mean. And that's why I said at the start about this being a skill level. You see, when you first learn to code, the first thing you learn is how to write code and to solve problems. And for a lot of people, that's where they sit for quite a long time. But there is so much more to being a professional software engineer. You need to be able to slow down and collaborate in order to write quality code that lasts a long time and allows you to build on top of it in the future instead of just doing it as fast as possible. And that's something that takes experience to learn. You don't get many senior engineers being cowboy coders because senior engineers have been burned by this and they've learned their lesson. They've felt the pain of no holds barred coding and they've learned why it's a bad thing. So don't fall into the same trap. Force yourself to write tests, force yourself to do pair programming, even if you aren't feeling particularly sociable today. Speak to your security team before you start writing code, speak to your ops people about any performance gotchas before you write code. Basically slow down. Be more thoughtful and you'll grow and benefit as a result. The real life cowboys all died out a very long time ago and the software engineering version of them is on their way too. It's a ticking clock, so don't be in that crowd for too long. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to my channel.